easels to see if that's acceptable. Hopefully everything is acceptable. That would be the last of uh, the things that we need to do in the land conversion and, and the National Park Service would have to make a decision on whether to approve or disapprove it. Um, we sp she spoke about the Jerome Fitness uh, Court. Uh, ribbon cutting was done on December 14th. Great, great facility. We're playing our next one at Delhi Park. So as soon as the fund is in place, we'll start that improvements. By the way, that court was all done by city staff. So our staff can, can not only do repairs of, of equipment, but they can actually develop new, new facilities. And I'm trying to plan a, a small strike crew with our deferred maintenance cash to, to go and blitz the park sites one at a time. Uh, Six and Lacey, same situation. We did our ribbon cutting on December 14th. Uh, some of you were there. Great event, a lot of turnout. The kids just love the facility. Uh, and um, I can't speak more about that. It's very nice. If you saw the butterfly sculpture, it turned out beautiful. Uh, Center Street Urban Greening Project. Project is about 50% completed. And that's the project at Jerome Park uh, on Center Street that uh, we took out the street between the two baseball fields and we're actually uh, installing a drought tolerant and bioswale stream between the two. Uh, and we got that uh, all through a grant, an Urban Greening grant. We've also applied for new applications for Three, three park sites, a Memorial Community Center, uh, phase one, which is the community center. We've got a phase two, which is a gymnasium. Uh, we also applied for additional funding for Raid and Myrtle Park and Standard and McFadden Park. And I'm in the process right now uh, talking to the planning department and the public works department to do a zone change. It's still zoned residential, so I'm gonna change it to open space and uh, and also do the environmental documents. The state has already done a walkthrough and they've contacted us on the status of the, the zone change and the environmental documents, so it looks promising. Uh, the next. Santiago Park Improvements. We also applied for two grants for Santiago Park Improvements with the State uh, Coastal Conservancy, and we got awarded both grants. One for, thank you, one for a million dollars for the Santiago Gas House Project, and the other one for $250,000 for the Main Street entrances from Main Street into the Santiago Park to the playground equipment area. Uh, the, in fact, the agreement was just signed today, so we'll be forwarding that up to the, to the state and uh, we'll get the projects rolling. And I just want to say that um, Ron Ono is very critical in these grant applications. He's been here and created relationships with folks and uh, it's incredible what he's done and I just want to thank you, Ron, for your thank hard you. work on this. So thank you. Thank you so much. Vandalism, vandalism still continues. It continues every day. In fact, it's frustrating. We go in there and fix things and, and a week later, it's the same thing is destroyed. Um, and as you know, most of it is either in Santiago Creek, it's, it's uh, on some of our bike trails, uh, a security camera has been vandalized already. Uh, the recent vandalism we just had, there was a fire on the Main Street Bridge, uh, the bike trail that goes under the bridge to the discovery signs, yeah. And, uh, and we are currently repairing the, the fence along the PE bike trail that's been vandalized in, uh, uh, in, in the encampments with homeless encampments in the area. So we, we're repairing it today. Uh, we are going to um, uh, sweep it or power wash the whole bike trail. And then we also are going to install signs on the fencing at the entry points of the fence that says bike trail is closed from dusk to dawn. So that way it will allow the police department and our security part personnel to go in there and, and, uh, and chase out the, any kind of encampment that's happening on the trail. Uh, and that's it. That completes my presentation. Any questions? Commissioner Pedroza, can you tell us uh, much about the gas house project? I'm just curious. I've seen that there for years, and uh, what the heck are they going to do with that? 
the, the, the gas house project is between Valencia and the existing uh, restroom building. It's the, all the dirty area of Santiago. It's basically in the middle of the, the uh, Santiago stretch. It's all dirt right now. Mm -hmm. We are going to actually do a lot of grading to make it handicap accessible. We're going to install walkways, uh, access, uh, jogging trails, a bioswale, uh, and the amphitheater, a small nature type amphitheater. Uh, we are going to change the, the gas house into a facility that can be rented uh, with a small uh, kitchenette inside so you can actually rent it and have coffee and, and cold drinks and provide it for when you have events at the, at the um, amphitheater area or the picnic areas. And, um, and also we'll in improve the security lighting through that whole section. Uh, and then and install uh, native plant material and native grasses. Most of the eucalyptus trees that's in that section are going to be removed uh, because of the major grading that's taking place. Yeah. Thank you, Ron. That's Thank fantastic. You. And also, once Santiago Park is nice, we're thinking of, and I've done this before in other agencies, is having a park ambassador live or a caretaker live at the park. And so uh, you can do that a couple ways, but, but then you have someone, eyes and ears there. We want to make it clean and safe first for them. <laughs> and then uh, you, we can go out with an RFP and request people to, you know, you let them live there free. They do certain things and, um, you know, pay for their utilities and things that you can, you can if you want to. <laughs> so anyway, thank you. <laughs> Well, uh, Commissioner Macias, I, I'm really proud to hear of all the improvements that are coming to the parks and all the investment I think is, well being, is going to be very well taken by the community. But I've been in San Ana for 40 years and live in my current home for 35 years. And um, like I stated before, I raised my sons behind the gate, behind my house. And the reason is because there is no safe green area. And I brought this to uh, Mr. Rono and different uh, entities in regards to thinking about it for that area to create a park. And I'm not looking for a small pocket park because I think they deserve better than that. They've been waiting and waiting for way, way too long. And as I see the north, the south of Santa Ana, you know, being improved, um, the only park I think that I have seen is the one on Main and um, McFadden Pocket Park, the one on Sixth and Lacey, and I am I'm, I'm really happy to see all the improvements, especially because there are many schools and, and the community is going to be using in, in those parks. But at the end of the day, um, Santa Ana is uh, Santa Ana is a city for everyone, and I think that if it's within your possibilities to start looking for. A uh, little bit bigger grants, so they can see where um, bring the park. Like I said, I've been from first. Um, I think the closest park is in the Memorial Park, Warner and and Flower, and then the Jerome Park, um, the Electric Park, and that's that's nothing. So. Uh, my sorry. question is what? that I'm yeah. looking for a park yeah. site, and I brought that at church before, and they said, but they have a swap land, and I know how the city has the magical things to do when they want to do something. Hopefully, it's within your possibilities to start looking into something for that area. Yeah. Well, I'm what, sorry. What area it. are you speaking of? I don't. I don't. Uh, I live in Mid City. It's a first. And um, the closest park is all the way on Edinger and Flower. So there is absolutely nothing there. Okay. Pardon me? Bristol? It's first Bristol. Um, the church is on Wilshire. I believe it's 941 uh, West Wilshire between Flower and Bristol. Board Member Macias, um, we're going to be doing a parks master plan. Mm -hmm. And that is I, that will identify all places within the city where there's potential to acquire land or to develop land. So uh, yes, we're not, when we apply for grants, we try to find places that we think will get funded for certain mm -hmm. things. Um, but the Parks Master Plan will give us an, a um, comprehensive view of our entire system. 
Um, and then we have that to go to the council and say, look, we need parks in these areas. We need funding to develop these types mm -hmm. of parks. So I think um, we're on the right path, but um, it sounds like it, you're looking for something specific in your area. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We're working on it. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to keep all of it. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Okay, if there are no other questions, we're going to move over to uh, the Santa Ana, Santa Ana Zoo um, operations report update by Ethan Fisher. Okay, dokie. Thank you. Um, so a few things at the beginning related to animal services. We sent some animals out to other, other facilities. We work with a lot of other zoos and aquariums. Uh, we sent a two-toed sloth to the Dallas Zoo, so he's now living there. It was one that was born born in Santa Ana, and, and our, he has now moved to Texas. <laughs> um, and we also sent a golden lion tamarind, that's a small endangered primate uh, monkey from Brazil. Um, we sent we sent her, um, him to the Atlanta Zoo for a, a conservation program there, and they're they're all how, they have great stories and, and are integral to some of the education programs that we do at the zoo, and we're we're successful with our uh, breeding programs and working with the other facilities. Also, some notes related to permits. There are a lot of permits and regulations operating a zoo type facility. Um, some that came up recently and. And uh, the reason I include these are just because they're not really something anyone ever knows about that goes on with the operation of the zoo. Um, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, they regulate us with a PPQ permit. That's a plant pest quarantine. So if you have potentially invasive uh, or damaging invertebrates, so insects, um, they regulate that. In our case, we have giant African millipedes. Um, they don't move very fast, but they're on the list, so we have to have a permit for them. And they even sometimes come out and do an inspection to see how we're housing them. But they're about 8 to 10 inches long, and we take them out to schools, and, and visitors meet them. Um, so that's one permit. Also, the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, so they regulate animals and and anything related to wildlife in California um, they they come out and do an inspection every year and we have to apply for our restricted species permit so that enables us to have the animals at the zoo that we do that no one else is allowed to have because you're not allowed to have an ocelot in California or a spider monkey uh, so th that was another permit also related to the animal services department um, during Boo at the Zoo. So that, going back a little bit in Halloween, uh, we had our two large boa constrictors out and they were the public was meeting them. So that was a, a nice opportunity to see um, an animal up close um, that you wouldn't typically see every day. Education, so for the education section, uh, we started our education programs and those are continuing now. Uh, we do the Zoo Explorer program on Tuesdays and Thursdays and that's where different schools come to the come to the zoo they get a presentation and then they go around the zoo and have different interpretive stations that they encounter where they learn about the animals they also have um, a clipboard with a and they're taking observations and that all is tied back to the california state science standards there there's also a bird lab program that they that some schools come and do and they learn all about birds. They dissect an owl pellet. So that, that's going on right now. And Dr. Sue's bug hut. So that was another thing that we did that ties back to um, the Boo at the Zoo event that we did in October. We completely transformed this one building that we have at the zoo into an area where you can learn all about invertebrates and, and bugs. You can meet a tarantula and meet some scorpions. So that's always a big hit with the public and with the kids. Uh, as far as operations go, I have the attendance numbers. Um, and then I put the past two years before that. So it's fairly consistent. Uh, last year was a little bit lower as a whole. Um, that, or 2018 was as a whole. It was a very rainy year. Um, but we're, we're averaging about 13,000 visitors in October. Facility repairs, we had a sewer lateral line repair, which was um, not a very glamorous project, but very helpful. <laughs> um, and that was actually the, the sewer department that came out to the zoo and did it for us. So they saved, they saved 
us as the zoo a lot of, of money and they also save the city money by doing that so before we can ever work with other departments that's very helpful um, an economic impact plan that was completed for the zoo um, back before the end of the year and and then sort of took a look at the master plan the zoo's master plan and the economic impact it would have on both Santa Ana and Orange County over the development of the plan as far as volunteers go, we had a volunteer orientation in December. There's also one coming up in February on the first Saturday of the month. So if you know anyone that wants to volunteer at the zoo, send them over to the orientation. Uh, we go through all the volunteer opportunities at the zoo, the, what the process is going forward, and, uh, and then they can get going on that. Group volunteering, that, that's another thing that we, we do a lot of at the zoo. We had, uh, we had a lot of volunteers plant trees before the end of the year in October, November, and December. We planted 100 trees at the zoo, um, the, same, the same grants that, that Ron is doing with the, um, parks, um, with the different parks. So we had lots of, lots of trees, and many people that came out to learn about urban forests. They came and had a classroom session where they learned about the benefits of trees, how you can incorporate trees into your community. Eagle Scout projects. So we met Matthew uh, earlier. That was definitely an ambitious project. It's unique. It's something special for the visitors to come out to the zoo now and see the anteaters feeding on the termite mound. Uh, whenever we can encourage natural behaviors in the animals, it, it tells a better story for the guests that are coming and, and meeting the animals. And then it also improves the welfare for the animals living at the zoo. Uh, we, uh, there were some other Eagle Scouts Eagle Scout projects that were completed and and there's other some others that are ongoing right now some fencing projects uh, enrichment projects there's scouts that are weaving fire hose into into devices for the animals to have in their habitats like a hammock uh, so lots of different things Friends of Santa Ana Zoo, so our, our partner support organization, uh, they, they're very active applying for grants because there's many grants that, the, that only a, a 501c3 nonprofit can apply for. So they were able to uh, receive $15,000 for a future um, stormwater garden to help us manage the water in the farm area and process it through the garden before it goes into the storm drains. Uh, they were also integral to the Boo at the Zoo event because the Friends of Santa Ana Zoo is the main organizer of that event. Uh, there's just not a way we could do them, that, that event without them. And they also put on the Snow Days with the Critters event on both December 14th and 15th and kids could come and play in the, the snow. Um, and they also had holiday music and arts and crafts and different education stations uh, teaching, teaching the, the visitors about um, adaptations that animals have for the winter time and for cold weather. And then the last thing I have on the operations report is related to marketing. Um, the Friends of Santa Ana Zoo help with marketing. Uh, something new, especially before snow days, we were able to get some banners on to the digital marquees that are in main place. And we're trying to do more, some more promotion of the zoo and just really get our name out there. So with that, I've gone through everything. Commissioner Pedroza, um, what time will the volunteer thing in February be at? Uh, I believe it's at 9 a.m. in the Red Barn. So um, it, it's they just the they don't have to RSVP in advance, but they're definitely welcome to, and and to show up at the front entrance of the zoo, and then uh, someone will lead them over to the Red Barn. Yeah. Thank you. Also, I want to note I I saw on Facebook the zoo has created a Facebook event for every free. Uh, day during the month for the whole year and I think that's great I've been promoting those so hopefully uh, more people are uh, getting that little look at the zoo thank you also one other plug um, through the end of February if you come on a Friday um, before two thir two o'clock um, you can ride the Ferris wheel for free so free Ferris wheel Fridays we're gonna we're trying that so <laughs> Thank you, Ethan. Do we have an update from our community services manager, Jeannie Hurtado? 
Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Well, Happy New Year, everybody. Nice Happy seeing everybody. Uh, we ended up on a high note uh, last year. We're in a new year. And I'm here to report out of the report for November 20th. And in between there, I'm going to also update you on some items that, you know, we already completed. Uh, so update on the update that I had before. On the first page, you'll see an update on the centers, Garfield Center, Logan, and Southwest. Well, Garfield and Logan are typical updates. You know, we're hiring folks, part-timers, we're restructuring, etc. But item number three, which is the Southwest Senior Center, unfortunately, it was destroyed due to a flood. Um, so right now it's closed. It's been closed since, since then. The good news is that through insurance funds, et cetera, and working closely with our HR department and Lisa's support, we are going to really blitz Southwest Senior Center, new paint, new colors, new flooring, and just have it ready for the seniors when we open up back uh, in spring. So it's a good thing. Um, and don't worry, the seniors that do need a lunch on, an, uh, on a daily basis, we have the Santa Ana Senior Center. Uh, staff was great. We, everybody worked very closely together with Senior Serve, with everybody. I have staff from Southwest at Santa Ana Senior Center helping out with the overflow of seniors. Um, and so everything is looking up. Seniors are being um, uh, given activities at Santa, C Santa Ana Senior Center. And of course, we do get the calls when is Southwest is being open. But you know what? Can't wait for that opening. I know Lisa can't wait. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I'd just like to chime in. This this was an opportunity we took because of um, funding from the insurance. And so um, why not? And with a few extra dollars, new kitchen, new everything. So when they walk into that facility, it's really going to be great. Now, the Santa Ana Senior Center folks are going to be upset. Yeah. So we are going to paint that facility and put new flooring in and put new furniture. Yes. <laughs> so we want to make sure everybody gets... The same. Yes. And on the second page, number four, um, just uh, updates about how many um, commodities we serve to 282 families. And also uh, the older adult um, uh, fair that took place um, at Bridgeport on October 1st. That was the fourth annual. I know over the years some ha of you have attended. Thank you so much. It's a great resource. It's specifically for the seniors. Um, the senior providers are there giving information to them that's much needed. And the seniors from both senior centers at the entertainment is them. They practice for months and weeks. You have dancing, you have singing, you, gra you have group choirs, you have from all over, not the nation, all over, all over the world. You have Chinese, Vietnamese, uh, Hispanic, and our MC year after year is Mr. Bill Sandoval. <laughs> <laughs> and the seniors request them. So, we'll be there next year. <laughs> and uh, the seniors also enjoy a harvest celebration in October. We had 150 seniors celebrating on that day with the DJ and, and goodies for everybody, costume contest, and a pumpkin carving contest. They, have, they are very active. Um, the Jerome Center, uh, the update there is that we were replacing the Jerome uh, Center um, flooring. I think you have heard about that. Well, good news, it's open. The kids are using it. The community is there using it as well. And uh, we has actually, thanks to Lisa, we got approved <laughs> to put the, the city, if you want to explain. <laughs> so we have on both ends of the gym, Jerome Center, Jerome Center, and in the middle is the city uh, seal logo, basically. And it's awesome. It just adds, it spruces it up. And we're getting new bleachers. Yeah, yes, yes, we are. <laughs> so uh, the community was very happy to see that, especially uh, our, the kids. They use that on a daily basis. Um, programs and services, the brochure, you have that a copy in front of you. Typically, I just talk about it, but now here's the, the finished product. And this time we featured uh, one of our gardens, but in, in the write-up is actually all five gardens. This is an awesome picture. This is what is grown out there. And Bill, is this is a Pacific Electric, right? But I know at El Salvador, similar uh, vegetables are, are grown there as well. Um, right now we're working on the 1-4 for spring. So next time I'll, I'll try to bring down when it's in. Uh, movies in the Park, we continue with that. The last one of the year was on October the 5th um, at Fisher Park with Hotel Transylvania. The after school um, adventures program, I'm happy to report, 106 students participated at all our sites. Youth sports, 
Uh, the update that I have here was just general information that it's coming up, registration's coming up, but I do have some totals for you that I'm going to talk to you about verbally. Uh, for the boys basketball program, we have a total of 493 registered. For the co-ed flag football, we have 214 as of today. And the celebration that took place uh, at the Santa Stadium on November the 17th, uh, we had in attendance about close to 500 people there. So that was a good one. Uh, community gardens, I'm not going to talk much about that because it's already in the brochure. Um, well, the only one portion is that on October the 25th, El Salvador Community Center uh, partnered up, with, actually the garden, with Tarticia Pilar. And they had a great workshop out there on on the annual Harvest Festival. And um, uh, Veronica DeRoche, that heads up the garden program, was out there giving out information that's much needed to the community. So that was a great collaboration. Special events, we had karate tournament uh, at Salgado Center. And um, this annual tournament turns out a lot of people to the event. We had over 150 participants and spectators on November the 10th. Park Carnivals, the last one of the year, took place November 8th through 11th at Madison Park. You know, that's always a good thing, you know, when the families come out, it's with the walking distance, and so they have a good time. And we're currently working uh, on the on the carnival um, schedule for 2020, the final one, uh, for, uh, you know, to finalize that rotation for this year. Plaza Navideña, well, it seems like it was last year, and it is last year. <laughs> and it took place in, in uh, December. Uh, thank you for those that came out. Just a great holiday event to start off the festivities. It's the tree lighting. We start off the festivities on that day, November 16th. Uh, we had great sponsors this year. Northgate gave out like 300 um, uh, sweet bread, 300 um, hot chocolates, and a lot more. Also, um, we had uh, Dos Mexicanos Grill food truck also dedicated 300 hot chocolates to the uh, folks that attended. And this year, we got a great deal with a talent, which is Marichi Reina de Los Angeles. Long time ago, about 15 years, 20 years ago, I had them at the Santa Stadium for a lot more than what they charge us this time. They did it because staff talked to them saying, hey, there's a local community event. Please come out, and they give us a great deal. So that was this year. I don't know. Oh, on well, December, I don't know if it's going to happen again. But it was awesome. You were there, Irma. You could, uh, you know, talk about that. Um, and also, we always reach out to the to the schools. They were there again, and you know, the the, the, the kids, and also to our red classes um, came out to perform as well for Ballet Folklorico. Um, I could go on and on, but just an awesome event. Um, the last but not least here is all the information on the stats that I promised I was going to give um, on, on a monthly basis on the facility rentals and permits. So for October, we had a total of 2,444. Uh, special event reservations for park reservations, we had seven. Film permits, we had two. And f those are for the public property. Film permits for private property were four. Just a real quick um, thing on film permits. Um, we do get a lot of requests from students, from like Chapman University, et cetera. But then again, once in a while, we get those big ones that uh, we can't talk about it because it's going to be high profile, you know, actor there, what have you. That happens a couple, I mean, every three years, every five years. So um, that's it for my report. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you. Commissioner Gomez, so um, I mentioned a little bit before, America on Track is getting together with Madison Neighborhood um, parents from the school and they did a walkthrough to the park and one of the things that they were wondering is the community garden at Madison Park they have no they don't know if it's is, is that one still active is it's active because I did see it posted with certain times and dates mm -hmm. but none of the parents there knew is there any flyers like maybe you could give me or we could distribute throughout the I, school just to make I, a little I bit more them to you and we will appreciate your help with that yeah. yes Veronica um, runs all five different gardens so she rotates her time and she is there Saturday mornings as well. And she has two interns that help her. One in particular, I always remember her name vividly because she, when I went out there to Madison to meet her, her family are farmers, and that's the way she grew up, okay? She's a college student uh, about to graduate. She, you ask her anything, and she knows everything about gardens. So I have great staff out there. So please help us. Some people haven't heard. That's why this was... The cover this time we want to get the word out so it, we would appreciate your help yes 
good Commissioner Gomez. I was trying to look for the garden information so I didn't have to ask you. <laughs> it's right in the front. It's, oh, it's only the front. And I was looking for Because it was featured. So it's oh, right here. There we go. But I can send you more information. So Perfect. Perfect. Thank Thank you. Me, I'll send you more of some information. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Uh, and also going back to Madison, um, we did do a few things out there at the school, at, on, at the park. I don't know if you remember the um, uh, batting cage. Yeah. The, the, it's gone. The um, basketball court that's fenced in, there was trees growing over, so that's all cleared up and, and cleaned up so people can use it. And then the playground, the surfacing in the playground, we brought that back up to what it should be so that it didn't have big dips and uh, a safety issue. Um, but, but the garden, uh, the um, Madison Neighborhood Association was is interested in running that garden. So the last we heard is they wanted to have an MOU with us, and we'd be happy to do that. But um, I'm not sure where we are on that, if you want to. Uh, we're still trying to work with them. But up here, Hiram put up the hours, but we will send that to you. And Commissioner Gomez, we did also have a question on that fenced um, basketball court. It's it, is it locked? Like so, the public can't use it. Was that intended for only the school to yeah. use? I don't know why. No, we want to teach her with so fenced in. I yeah, know. And, uh, and she didn't know. Like, don't the like school fences. doesn't use it. <laughs> Ron Ono, Parks and Rec. Um, that fence that uh, was under our joint use agreement, the joint use agreement with the school district was we would utilize their site for education and teaching and training about gardening. Mm -hmm. And then they would use our site uh, using the basketball court. But this, because the students couldn't come in an open basketball facility, we had to secure one of the courts wow. for the schools to use. That's the reason why that court is separated uh, and secured when the kids uh, during school hours are using it. Okay. So, Commissioner Gomez, so during school hours it's closed, but if, if school wanted to use it for their kids, they could, is what you're saying? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then... After school hours, it's not available to the public. It, it is. We we can if it's if the existing basketball course is heavily used. There's a gate you can open up and utilize that court after school hours. There so is. It could, oh, it's very okay. complicated. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. But we can take a look at that. I think I fell asleep at the switch here. Um, those are just receiving receiving file reports. Looks like. Um, uh, we don't have any public uh, speakers, no no requests filed. Obviously, there's no one here. Um, we're going to go to board member comments, and I will start on my left with Commissioner Gomez. I think I've used all my comments at this time. <laughs> I appreciate all the work. I really enjoy hearing all the programs, and I love going to all the sites, and and I just it just been a pleasure really working with everybody and just hearing all the great stuff and I'm very excited with all the extra money because I know the department needs it and it's going to be put to good use. Well and I also just want to say that I know you said on the Madison uh, Neighborhood Association. Oh no I don't. You, you don't? Oh I'm sorry. I you live in the neighborhood because I have to say how impressed I am with that association. Just the neighborhood. Everybody comes out for for, I mean, everyone comes out to the park for everything. Mm -hmm. It is so well attended. I love it. I love how involved they are. Yeah. So it's what, a neat neighborhood. Yeah. I was a vice president a, a few, I think one, a year ago maybe. Oh, okay. But I stepped back. I'm a Madison mom, so my children go to Madison. So I'm very close to all the parents that are actively involved. It's a great school. And still I volunteer yeah. with the association when I can. Well, good for you. That's a good neighborhood, and we do appreciate your input. And that school does have a great principal too. Yeah. So we'll go to Commissioner um, Aleman. First, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Just wanted to say uh, thank you to the Parks and Rec staff. I've been hearing a lot from the parents who are um, grateful that you know, we have another year where uh, sports and youth programs are affordable. I think Santa Ana, if I'm mistaken, is the most affordable in the area. And so, you know, the parents are very grateful for that because there's a lot of opportunities to do. Uh, affordable sports for kids in this day and age and you know their hope is that we can continue that into the future because they really like uh, the support the city is given and 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 that so they're really grateful for all the work you're all doing Commissioner Pedroza Commissioner Pedroza I just want to thank Lisa and her staff you guys are doing a great job it's really making a difference and Lisa and I were speaking before the meeting there's a number of jobs available right now in Parks and Rec so I just want to encourage the commissioners to promote that and let's get some uh, some new bodies in there to help run and everyone else. 
Thank you. That's a good suggestion. We are the ambassadors for for the city and for the parks. I guess that's a good idea. We have a lot of good people in the city, especially a lot of young kids that could use those jobs. Go ahead, Commissioner Macias. Commissioner Macias, I just want to thank everyone, especially Lisa and Mr. Bono, actually everyone, because nothing is done by itself. So um, just attending council meetings and see her every meeting, even though very, very late meetings. And, and, and it is, um, as a resident, a joy to see everyone working together and the residents are seeing the improvement, like or not, you know, is not is that not going unnoticed. So I really appreciate the effort of everyone because uh, it's everyone's um, working together. And I really appreciate that. Thank you. And especially when you attend council meetings, now they're looking at you, the council members. So I really appreciate that. Thanks. Uh, Commissioner Guerrero, I'd like to thank everybody, Parks and Recs, for a fantastic job that we did last year. You did last year, and we look forward uh, to a fantastic job this year. Thank you. And uh, count, uh, council member, <laughs> I'm gonna. You're a council member. You're a council member. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner <laughs> Guerrero, I uh, just want to let you know that uh, Santa Anita. I know you're very fond of that area. Um, we're going to be putting in our synthetic turf. Uh, we're scheduling that for this year, Ron. And so we will come back with some reports on that. We need more parking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had a question. Now that you bring that the, the turf up. Uh, with the new turf going in at Santa Anita, the Neighborhood Association will probably be moving their events over to Campesino Park. One of the concerns at Campesino Park or Cesar Chavez Park is the restroom. I see a lot of maintenance going on over there, but I don't know if that has to do with the restroom because I also see some porter parties out there. Oh. Is there anything going on out there? Uh, that, that question just recently came up about the condition of the restroom. The staff went in there and repaired the lights and the... And the um, uh, what do you call it? the commode? It, it actually was uh, the support, the back support of that uh, commode was rot rotting out. So they went in and put a new backboard, replaced that. So that restroom should be open right now and in use. All right. Another question: In the future, are we seeing a center being built there, or is that going to be on hold due to the golf course thing going on with the Willowway? I think that's that, your question. I think that will depend on the master plan. When we go through the master plan process, there is a area that was leveled off for a, a recreation center or a community center, but we never built it because of funding. Master plan will probably identify that as probably a, a source. But more than more important uh, that I'm trying to get done and Lisa's trying to get done is to <clears throat> open up uh, Santa Anita Park. If we can acquire land to open it up to First Street mm -hmm. and and give it more space, so we can we can expand the parking lot, we can improve the community center uh, with the new turf going in. We want to improve the sports lighting. Uh, so, in fact, uh, just recently today, let's see, was it? Yesterday, I believe, or it might have been today, <coughs> staff went in and actually removed some of the uh, wooden fencing on one of the residents and, and they're starting to build up the block wall. Those They should be finished in the next couple of days. So all that we're constantly doing with, with the funding we have, uh, minimal improvements in various park sites. And Santa Anita is one of them that we need to look at. Yeah, expanding that parking lot out towards First Street would, I mean, you guys have all been there, I hope. Uh, it's really hidden, so it's like a haven for homeless and right. transients and everything. But expanding that parking lot out towards first, that would be so great for uh, that park. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Commissioner Guerrero, and also to Felipe's uh, president of his association over there. And he does a lot for those families out there. He makes things happen, and he also rallies a lot of people. He's like the Pied Piper. I don't know how he does it, but. People come when he says it. We're going to have something here, and people turn out. So, Felipe, Felipe is responsible for uh, helping a lot of people out there. Thank you, Felipe. Um, we're going to go with um, looks like uh, staff. Well, should we go with uh, start this way, or are we are we all done? Well done. Gosh, I think I still wanted to stay here. Yeah. <laughs> Do you need a meeting, No, our next meeting is February twenty sixth, twenty twenty. So I think I just need a motion to adjourn. Commissioner Pedroza, move to adjourn. Second. Got a second from Commissioner Guerrero. And we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night.